Hey guys, how you doing? It's uh, Gavin here from Start Afresh uh, Personal Training. So, what I want to um, this video came from. Uh, I asked a question on my Facebook page. Um, did anybody want to know how to use a Fitbit or a tracker um, to learn how to lose weight? Um, end of the day, I've, I've got a got a Fitbit, obviously, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, and it took a little bit of working out, and it's all very well having all this information, but you need to know what to do with the information when you've got it. Otherwise, it's just a really, really fancy watch that tracks a bunch of metrics you don't understand. So I'm going to quickly go through um, the dashboard. Um, this is on my phone on the app. There's another version of the desktop, which um, I don't actually don't use that much. But I'm going to go through what I use on my phone and everything is there, you know, uh, easily, easily, easily accessible. So as you can see, um, on the front of my front of the page there, you've got uh, this is today. So I did I've done 2,132 steps this morning, um, and I can see I've done four floors, one and 1.5 kilometers, thousand calories, and I've been active for 13 minutes. So I've had um, a client this morning, so that's probably where all my steps have come from. Um, I'm going to move down just a little bit, and you got a bunch of tiles here, so you can see my my heart rate is pumping on the on the right hand side in the middle there, and it's resting at 53 beats a minute. Um, normally, when I'm resting, it's about 40 odd, um, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to go through each of these tiles, and I'm going to tell you a really really easy way that you can sort of use this tracker um, right this minute to start losing weight today, basically, and get fitter. So I'm going to go into the exercise goal. So I'm um, a real advocate of, of exercising at least five times a week and, and on weekends, although I've not got any um, specific exercise done, I tend to do like active rest, which is just going for a walk. I mean, I've got a little uh, five-year-old um, and we love to go for a walk down by the beach, take the bike out. doesn't matter if, it, you know, if it's cold or anything, we just, we just go for a walk and, and do something together. So uh, yesterday uh, I had, actually that was one walk but we had a break in between. So obviously you can see it, it automatically tracks um, the two walks. So one was there, one was back. Obviously we walked a bit harder on the way there. Um, I'll just scroll down a little bit. Um, I can see that I did seven days of activity last week. Uh, most, of, most of those are weight training and, and weight training is by far the best way to start losing, uh, losing weight. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I was 20 kilos overweight um, and I've managed to keep it off for six years and I do very little cardio, it's all weight training. Um, I'm not the biggest person, I'm not the most muscular and ripped anything else, but um, to keep my weight down, weight training is by far the, um, the, the best way to do it. And as you can see, lot, so I, I'm going to go into... Um, Go into these ones there. Okay, so sport that was just running around, um, running around on the rugby field on Saturday with my little boy, um, and then obviously Friday is the one. So as you can see, um, so I keep knocking that Snapchat off. Um, as you can see, the uh, Friday at 11 o'clock, it was 96 minutes. It wasn't actually that long. I forgot to turn my tracker off, so it, it carried on uh, over. So it would have been essentially about five, six hundred calories I burnt that day. So if I go into it for you, I've got all this information here, okay? So you've got um, 26 minutes of cardio, one hour of fat burning, and 47 custom zone. I'm going to talk about that custom zone in a minute. Um, and that is really where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck, all right, with regards to, to your weight training. So as you can see there, um, my, my heart rate started off fairly low, um, and it burned around by the 89. Then as you can see, it progressively goes up. So those peaks and troughs are essentially my rest periods in between. And the peaks are where I'm working hard, and the uh, the troughs are where I'm obviously resting in between sets. But at the end there, you can see it's really high and really red. But I said I don't do cardio, I don't do like lots of running and cycling and stuff like that. I do a very very quick burst of um, of activity, um, and about four or five minutes of high intensity training at the end of the workout, which is brilliant. It gets your heart rate up and really sort of finishes the work off workout really well. Now I'm going to go into calories. So as you can see, 800 calories. That's not completely right. It, you know, it was it was a bit less than that, but um, I'm roughly doing about 8.4 calories a minute. So um, with, with that sort of stuff, um, you know, really important. So if I do the same workout next week, I want to be doing at least 8.4 calories a minute, 
or more because I want to improve. I want to get my heart rate up and I want to try and do better than last week. So that's just, um, you know, a, a good way of doing it is to challenge yourself. If you did the same workout next week and you did uh, six calories a minute, you probably didn't work as hard as this week and you may want to look at that for next week. And so the impact on my day. So the impact on my day, um, I don't really worry about this too much, but, um, you know, 1,528 one of my 2,000 steps by the looks of it, um, and 800 calories of my 1,000 calories that were burned, and 91 um active minutes of 137 all right so i don't worry about this too much it doesn't really bother me that much so i'm gonna go back a little bit so once you've got your um your exercise done you know you're gonna you can see what you've been doing and what you need to try and do is set yourself um a a set point so you need to set yourself a goal every week that you were going to commit to doing however many uh days of exercise a week um and that's really, really important because if you've got yourself a limit um, or a set point, you're going to try and hit those targets every week. And that's the whole point about one of these fitness trackers is to obviously track what you're doing. So commit to working out a couple of times a week. Um, you can you can adjust these settings um, yourself. I put five down because five is what I normally do. The other two are just bonuses if I, if I do them. All right. So we're going to go back a little bit. Then we're going to your sleep. So this sleep is going to be brilliant. Okay. This is so I, I don't wear my um track at the bed anymore i just find it really really uncomfortable but you know i do i do occasionally have done a lot so as you can see um i'm a shift worker um and do these late at night so my sleep is all over the place and certainly something i need to improve on um as you can see you know six hours there eight and eight hours nearly nine hours there six hours there six hours five hours um and you know, these two there, you go eight and a half hours that night, then I had a nap in the afternoon because I was going back and working a night shift. Um, as you can see, my sleep's all over the place. So when you come down, you can sort of um, click on that there. And it gives you, you can scroll the screen left and right, and it gives you an average, okay? So obviously I've typed in eight hours. So I'm gonna try and get eight hours sleep a night, and that's gonna be the best thing for me. Um, really doesn't happen that way i'm afraid but you know i try and get as best i can and obviously you can see i I sleep a long time after long shifts um but with regards to sleep this is going to be one of the the best things that you can do to start losing weight and when you look at your overall day i mean if you're not not a shift worker it'll be a little bit easier for you to get your eight hours um a night in and you know if you're one of those people that just can't get seem to get to bed at night and not tired at night it's probably because you're overstimulated and being overstimulated is one of the worst things so that's things to do with coffee and you know energy drinks and things like that and if you can really start to cut those down you're going to start finding that you're going to be able to go to bed a little bit earlier so with regards to um how do you actually go to bed earlier well you go to bed earlier you 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 commit to yourself of of going to bed 10 minutes earlier every single night and once you get 10 minutes then you hit for 15 then you get to 20 then you get half an hour and if you do it really really slowly that way you're going to start to feel a lot more rested and it's going to have a a really really big impact on your overall day so if you're one of these people say i can't exercise because i'm too tired in the mornings um, or i can't exercise because i'm too busy try going to bed a bit earlier Um, you know very rarely are any of us flat out busy till 10 p.m at night um you know, unless you run a business or wherever else, you know, most of us retire to the couch by about eight o'clock. Um, and, you know, if you're sitting there watching TV till 10, 11 o'clock at night, then, you know, you just need to turn the TV off and go to sleep. Um, you know, I'm not here to preach, but I'm just here to say that if you want to get your uh, get yourself healthy, get yourself back in shape and sleep is going to be a really, really important factor. Um, to the point it's really often overlooked by people trying to lose weight um, lots of people I've worked with are uh, they stay awake and they get four or five hours sleep a night well that's really not conducive to um, to get in to get in uh, getting healthy getting fit and losing some weight so you know try it you got a tracker put it on try and commit to getting eight hours a night, a night uh, eight hours sleep a night if you're only getting six or seven then try and commit yourself to go to bed 10 or 15 minutes earlier every day and start off small and you know don't just go from four to eight hours it's not going to happen it's too much of a jump but for if you do only get in four or five hours 
then try and get five and a half hours or six hours and that's the way to do it and then track it as you can see try and get a good average of around about eight hours i'm terrible at it um yeah very rarely like i said i don't wear my tracker to bed much anymore because i just uh, find it uncomfortable but you know you can see i often fall short um you can see three out of the seven days there i've, I've did, it, did okay this one's a bit better this week um, but yeah anyway try that um try and get some sleep often often overlooked um, okay, so next one is steps per hour. So with anything, if you've uh, committed to doing uh, 10,000 steps a day, then you're not just going to do 10,000 steps in one go. You're going to it's going to accumulate over the day. And a really really good thing about this tracker is that it's got um, and I, I tries to get you to do 250 steps per hour, and it's really really cool to do. So if you're you now I'm usually busier in the mornings than I am in the evenings, but obviously you can see where I work shifts. Um, I was I was obviously um, I was on my days off actually, but I was I was really busy yes, yesterday mornings playing with the child with with my little boy and parties and stuff. The afternoon end didn't do a huge amount, but try and get those 250 uh, steps and you know every hour. Um, so as you can see there, look, um, Sunday smashed it. Thursday did okay, and yeah, there you go, pretty much. So. Another thing, how do you get your 250 steps a day? Well, you just go for a little walk. So, and a really, really good, uh, good thing that I, I try and try and do if I'm if I'm in the office, I'm sitting down a lot. Is that every 40 minutes I'll set my alarm and I'll go for a one or two minute walk. I'll just go run the building up the stairs, down the stairs, and by doing that, I'm able to get a couple of steps in. Um, it's a really welcome rest anyway. You get, you know, you obviously you got smokers. I'll go outside and smoke. If you're not a smoker, set your alarm for 30 minutes and go for a, go for a, a minute walk. It's only a minute; it's nothing. And if you did that over the course of the day, um, straight away, then you're going to be burning a few extra calories than you would normally do. So, to add to your step rate, um, and ultimately over time, you know, you're going to lose weight because if you did nothing, if you sit down at your desk in the morning, leave in the afternoon, and did nothing, just by going for a one-minute walk every 40 minutes, um, say you work for 18 hours, that's 16 minutes of exercise you wouldn't normally get. So this is a really, really good way of monitoring if you're getting your steps in. Um, and I, I think you can actually adjust those steps as well. Um, oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I don't play with it that much. Um, next one, you're gonna go into your rest and heart rate, which we are just, it's just been beeping. Um, and I've got a really low heart rate, and as you can see, um, it sits off, quite often sits around about 43, 40, and that's usually, cat, usually catches this, um, you know, when you're woken up from sleep, when in the night, um, and as you can see, yeah, when I'm sitting down doing not much, it's quite low. Um, and again, this is a really good indicator of your of your level of fitness as well. Um, the fitter you get, the lower your heart rate is, um, and it comes down a lot. Um, you know, it comes down a lot the more you exercise. And some of the, the some of the unfitter clients I've had over time, which is one of the things I do to check their fitness, and quite often when they do the first ever fitness test with me, when by the time they come to do it a second and third time, their heart rate is significantly decreased, which is a really, really good indicator of heart health. So as you can see, it's, it's, you know, the, the Fitbit prompts you, um, to prompt you a lot. And as you can see, you know, if you're down there, it, it tells you what, what's good and what's bad. So if it was up, you know, a little bit higher or lower, it wouldn't be so great. Um, but yeah, it's excellent for men my age, which is pretty cool. Um, you can play with this yourself as well. So obviously this is a good indicator to, to have a look at. Um, and then as you can see, uh, heart rate zones there and where my heart rate uh, tracks over, over the day. So um, those little red, red ones you can see at the tip is where I've worked especially hard. The rest of them is cardio and the other side is fat burn. Fat burn. Um, with regard to fat burning, it's usually a lot lower intensity. Um, I like to have a custom, um, a custom um, heart rate zone, which I'm going to explain to you in a minute. Um, and if you get it, and if you, when you're doing your exercises, even you're walking, if you get into that custom zone, you're going to be far more likely to burn a lot more fat than you would be than just general wandering around. Um, and it's very, very cool to track all this sort of stuff, right? And like you can see, you can see where I'm busier through the day um, when I'm not so busy or not so active. Um, again, on the bottom, I don't actually use all this this much, um, 
the, the kilos gained and, and, and my weight, I don't track on my Fitbit, I track on my fitness pal, which I'll do another video for um, to help you as well. What's good about the Fitbit and my fitness pal, they sync together um, and you, it gives you how many, so the, the bottom tile on the left there, um, it tells you how many calories, uh, how much food you've eaten and it sort of counterbalances them as well, which is really, really cool. And I'll do that in another video. Um, but obviously I'll go through it now because I'm here, you know, I, I have weighed occasionally, not, not for a while though. And it's quite nice. It tracks tracks your weight, um, and you know shows you where you're at. And it's always good to do it. But the problem with weighing is um, it can actually hinder you as well, because if you weigh too much, if you weigh every single day, um, it'll drive you actually crazy. Because our bodies will fluctuate with weight every day. And let's just think, your body is a vessel. So let's just say you're standing here with an empty stomach, then you eat a kilo of food, which isn't that difficult with liquid as well. You weigh a kilo heavier. So therefore, if you're um, if you were like somebody that weighs and uses weight as an indicator of success, you're going to be absolutely frustrated by the fact that you're putting weight on and losing weight every single day. So a good way to do it: weigh once a week, weigh the same time every week, um, weigh after you've been to the toilet and before you've eaten anything um, in just a pair of shorts or your undies or whatever it is, and track it every week. Then you can see, um, you know how well you're doing over time. And if for argument's sake you start to put a little bit of weight on, then try and find out what that weight is. If you're weight training, it could be muscle. If you're not weight training, doing lots of cardio, it could be you're putting body fat on. Or it could be, you know, a bunch of other things. But by tracking it this way, you know, you're gonna be um, you know well on your way to success. And in the, the day having having the knowledge, not having you know, is gonna be uh, the best thing for you. So let's go back. Uh, water again very, very important. Lots of us are very, very dehydrated. And what the Fitbit does makes it a lot easier for you to track your water. I don't track my water because I drink lots and lots of water every day anyway. I don't need to. It's not something I need to track. But let's just say I I usually carry a 750ml bottle with me every day and I drink about three of those a day. And I just tap on it, two, three, uh, and I'm already, I know I've already hit my water. Um, um, you know, what you're going to find is then, yes, you might go to the toll a bit more, but you get your steps up. Always a bonus. But you, when you start to drink more water, your skin will get better. You feel a bit more energized. You know, you, you everything feels better. We, we, we're mostly made of water. And um, often we drink coffee and tea and we, we're always dehydrated. So really, really important to track your water. And it's dead easy to do. Just one tap and it's there. It's nothing, don't have to worry about it too much. Let's go back a little bit. So that, that's the, uh, the, the front. You can obviously edit these towels and stuff. These are the ones I like. Um, go across the bottom you've got challenges so you can jump in and challenge your friends and everything else um, I don't really use it that much I'm not, I'm not really uh, worried about how many steps I get because I do a lot of uh, weight training and, and gym stuff so it's not too bothered we've got some guidance it's really really cool it's got a bunch of um, bunch of cardio workouts you can do it's got how long it takes you how many calories you expect to burn but what you got to understand is, is that is, those calories are going to be different for everyone if you're a 100 kilo male doing these exercises you'd burn more calories than if you're a 65 kilo male um it's just you know if you're squatting you'd be squatting heavier if you're heavier or lighter if you're lighter so they're very they're good guides but um you know obviously if you're tracking it you're going to know exactly how many calories that workout's going to give you really really good obviously your friends and anything else um and then you've got your account so if you just scroll down what's really cool about this you can set all your goals so your seven day summary and what it does is it prepares a little report for you and really encourages you to look at this so in the last seven days i've done an average of seven thousand steps um which is okay um i've got an exercise goal of five exercise days i've done seven so you, let's just look at these is it as you go in so yep yeah, it's all pretty good um and let's just say i wanted to change it so i could say um no let's change it and i can I can change it to 7,500. So if I'm doing an average of 7,500, when you're first starting off, it might be worth you, you know, just doing nothing for a week, doing everything that you normally do, find your average, then set your set point at average, which means that um, that will be exactly where you are right now. Um, and where you are right now is going to be, is going to determine your success. So whereas next week you want to say, well, I do an average of seven and a half thousand steps per day. Um, and I weigh X, Y, Z, and I want to lose 
x kilos if you're too busy to get to the gym then what you need to do is commit to walking a little bit more so let's just say okay well i'm going to do baby steps um, and next week i'm going to commit to doing an average of 8,000 steps uh, a day um, that's only 500 steps extra you can easily implement that by every 30 minutes going for a very small walk but what you've done is you've then increased your activity levels a little bit every day you're hardly going to notice it but over time that extra activity if you did nothing else and your diet was exactly the same you would start to lose weight because you're a bit more active so i'm going to uh, just tap out of that um so that's fine then i'm going to go my exercise goals i'm going to click on this one as well to have a look what's going on there so yeah obviously i um you know like i could change that if i want to but i've set this to what i want to do and i'm happy with that um, and I was active every single day. That's what it's all about. That's why I've, I'm able to keep my weight down um, long term because I commit to being active every day. By being active every day, I feel better. Uh, I think better and think clearer. Um, I can manage on a little less sleep as well because I'm a bit. My body is a bit fitter and a bit, uh, bit more, a bit more efficient. And I feel better when I exercise. It's as simple as that. If I don't exercise for a day or two, um, I start to feel a bit, a um, bit lethargic and a bit, you know, achy as well sometimes, which is a bit funny. But and anyway, that's, that's just me. So next one, goals per night, seven hours. Um, I could click on this and I'm going to say, well, no, I'm going to change it. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting eight hours. So I'm going to say, no, I want more. And what I'm going to do is, uh, sorry, if I go back, it says seven, 10, and it's adjusted it for me. So as I was talking about, it's small changes every day over time give you results. So I'm going to say, nope, this doesn't work for me. I want more. It's going to set it to seven and a half hours. It's literally... 20 minutes extra a day can i try and can i do that is it achievable absolutely it's achievable i just got to bed 20 minutes earlier and if i'm watching uh, watching that, that film i just turn it off go to bed watch the rest for tomorrow we ain't going anywhere um so again you know try and improve every single day by doing tiny small things every day all right let's have a look at the next one so activity a day set at 60 i quite like 60 60 is fine obviously some days i don't get there um, but sometimes I do. I'm not going to bother changing it. I'm going to keep it exactly as it is. Goal weight, as I said, I don't track on it. Obviously, my goal weight is to put three kilos on of lean muscle, of, 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 so I'm improving. Um, I used to weigh over 90 kilos before. I'm 75 now, um, and obviously, I'm trying to increase my body composition by adding some muscle on, so um, I, I track that through my fitness pal, as I said. So food days logged, I don't do it through this app, although you can. Um, and I don't track my water because I know I, I drink a lot of water. Okay, about up to my report, so we go into activity, and obviously this is a really just summary thing here. So 10,000 steps is my is my goal. I'm not really worried about my steps. If I get there, I get there. This isn't a priority for me, but it may be for you. That distance is about eight kilo, eight kilometers. And um, what you can do, it calculates your stride. Okay, so. Uh, when, I'll show you that in a minute. You can measure your stride, um, put it in there, and it'll work out how many steps 10,000 is for you. Um, if you've got shorter legs, 10,000 steps will be less, but if you've got longer legs, it might be more. Calories, you can, um, I always, I, I set this at 2,500. I eat about 2,700 now, because obviously I'm trying to increase my muscles, so I need to eat a bit more. But over the day, I try to burn off 2,500 calories. That is my set point. Anything less than that, then obviously um, I try and improve it the next day. Um, so for you, the best way to do it, and I'll show you in a second, is just work out how many calories you've, you've done anyway. Uh, so over this first week, let's just say, um, see if I can, I can go back into it for you. So this is a, this is a calories right there. So... Um, these are this is so I got I got that top chart there. These are this this is my uh, uh, 2,500 calories, and I try and go over to over that. Okay, so this is again is your set point. Your 2,500 calories might be less, it might be 1,800, but you need to commit to burning a certain amount of calories per day. And for you to start losing weight, all you need to do is start burning an extra hundred, extra 150. That's all it is. Um, and although nutrition comes to part of that, I'm going to cover that in a different video. Just by doing exercise, an extra 100 calories a day to burn off is nothing. It really isn't. You, you can do it by an extra couple of steps. Okay, so commit to um, commit to actually burning off amount of calories. And the best way I do that is same with the sleep. Do nothing for a week. Do what you normally do. Weigh your tracker. 
and find out what your average is. It'll tell you. It'll, it'll tell you overall. Um, uh, three. So that's my average is is about that three hundred two thousand six hundred. Um, but you'll see anyway with that line going through the middle. If your line is a lot lower, then that's fine. That's your set point. And and then when you go back to the other screen, uh, where is it? Activity. You can come in there, type it in there, and that's going to be your minimum step point of how much calories you're going to burn every day. That's how much you're going to commit to. Um, next one is exercise. Like I said, uh, these are auto-recognized. Okay, so if you did a jog, it automatically pick it up. You wouldn't have to do anything with Fitbit. Walk the same, and it's obviously if you're doing 15 minutes or more, um, and you can obviously change them. So if I could say uh, five minutes, and you know that would work as well. Let's go back. So nutrition and body, um, food plan. I don't worry about deficits. Gets really confusing. Leave it blank. I would water goal. You decide how much water. Track what you normally do. That's going to be your start point, and then obviously commit then to doing a little bit better than you did last week. Simple as that. Uh, obviously, you can change your units. Whether you want it to be in uh, fluid ounces, cups, milliliters. Um, my goal is to gain at the moment. My goal weight is three kilos extra. Um, starting weight is body fat. That's all, all there, right there. And sleep we've covered as well, really important. And you can come in and you can change it. So I could set a sleep goal. Um, I left it, so I go seven hours, 30, and it'd work. But I'm gonna keep it at eight because I do try to get eight hours. Um, you can set alarms and wake up, stuff like that. And that's not really... Um, I'm going to cover that right now. Um, and you can receive sleep insights as well as a bottom. And what's really good as well is a reminder. So if you want to commit to yourself getting um, getting some extra extra hours, then commit to it and, and, and set a time. So let's just, I don't know whatever your routine is, and let's just say at uh, uh, 8 p.m. at night, um, you're going to commit uh, to go to sleep at 20 minutes earlier, then set a reminder for yourself. Um, so you don't sit there just binge watching TV. Um, it'll it'll get, set a little alarm uh, and you'll wake it. And obviously you realize then it's time to start winding down, turn the TV off, go to bed, whatever it is. Um, and you can do it that way. Um, very good. Next one. So I'll leave that off. And there's lots of uh, compatible apps as well. And the main one I want to want you to talk about is is just my fitness part, and I'm going to talk about that in another video. So that's my um, little walkthrough of Fitbit and how to get the most out of it. And the take home part of this whole thing is um, track everything for a week. Just do its thing. Don't worry about numbers, anything else. And then what I want you to do at the end of that week is write down all the sort of uh, things, certainly around how many steps you're doing, how much sleep you're doing, how many, what's the average calories that you burn every day. And then I want you to change the one thing, the one thing that you think you can, ch that will be the easiest thing to change um, and commit to doing that one thing. Put all your energy into that one thing. Could be different for everyone. For me, sleep is really hard. I try and get extra sleep. Um, I find exercise easy nowadays because it's, it's something I have to re try really, really, really hard to do. Once I started exercising, it became a habit. Now exercise is just what I do. It's like brushing my teeth. I don't even think about it. Um, I get up, I go to the gym. Simple as that. Or I go to the gym before work. Um, so yeah, so make a list of these metrics. The ones that's going to be important are going to be sleep, uh, steps, how many calories on average, water is really important and an activity goal of exercise. Pick one, commit to doing one, put your energy into it for 30 days um, and see how you go. And, and just and basically just tick it off on, a, on your little calendar every day, um, I got eight hours sleep, got eight hours sleep. If you fail on one or two days, it doesn't matter. Just, just the next day, pick up where you left off. And the more you do it, the better you will become and the more of a habit it will become. And end of the day, people think willpower is something that people have, it's not. Willpower, is very much a muscle. And like any muscle, you've got to practice and practice and practice. And if you practice and practice, it becomes easy and becomes easier and becomes easier to maintain every single day. So that's going to be um, you know, my overview of how to use a Fitbit. 
it's not very complicated it's actually very, very straightforward but people don't think straightforward people think complicated and none of this stuff is complicated it's just really really easy you just need the right approach and my take home from this is do one thing every single day focus your energy into that whatever it is um, anyway guys uh, good luck with that if you have any questions at all um, please leave me a comment down below and uh, subscribe to my youtube channel uh, if you found this video helpful um, i'd love to hear from you um, i'd love to hear what your goals are um, and hopefully I'll, I'll catch you guys soon thanks bye bye okay guys so what i did i missed out the um i missed out how to uh set your custom heart rate so what i'm going to do now is quickly go back into this um and and it's not right there hold on a second back there back there back there back there exercise activity heart rate zone sorry i missed that out um so when you go into your uh, heart rate zones, really, really important that you obviously exercise at an intensity that's going to lend itself to um, to burning calories. And uh, I will make another video on um, on the certain energy systems that we use and the best uh, best heart rates, uh, heart ranges to use for um, for weight loss and fat loss. But what I want to talk to you right now is that if you create your own custom heart rate. And this is a very, very basic equation, okay? You can go into this in a huge amount of uh, detail, but for most of us, this works really, really well. Your age, minus, uh, your, so 220 minus your age. That will give you your maximum heart rate. So I'm 38, so 220 minus 38 is 182. And what it does, this gives you my lower limit of 112 and an upper limit of 146. So when I exercise, I like to exercise between these two uh, zones because I know... That, that is where I'm going to get my, um, the best um, exercise effect uh, for, um, for my training. If I'm sub 100 beats a minute, I know that I'm not working very hard. Um, and I, I, oh, I'm burning calories. I'm not, I'm not efficiently burning body fat. If I'm up, to, up 146 and sometimes it goes a little bit more, then I know that I'm in the, the exact right zone to get the most out of my workout. Um, and so obviously you can set this yourself really. So as it says up there, 220 minus your age. Um, um, really, really good start point for you guys to to know that when you're working out um, in a right sort of uh, right sort of zone, um, and when you're in your when you're checking your track on your exercises, just just look down to your watch, make sure it's it's tracking at those. Anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to say about that one, and I'll uh, catch you later. Cheers.